Post-normal science PNS represents a novel approach for the use of science on issues where facts are uncertain, values in dispute, stakes high and decisions urgent. PNS was developed in the 1990s by Silvio Fundovich and Jerome R. Ravitz. It can be considered as a reaction to the styles of analysis based on risk and cost-benefit analysis prevailing at that time, and as an embodiment of concepts of a new, critical science, developed in previous works by the same authors. In a more recent work PNS is described as the stage where we are today, where all the comfortable assumptions about science, its production and its use, are in question. Topic. Context In 1962, Thomas Kuhn's The Structure of Scientific Revolutions introduced the concept of normal science as part of his theory that scientific knowledge progresses through socially constructed paradigm shifts, where normal science is what most scientists do all the time and what all scientists do most of the time. The process of a paradigm shift is essentially as follows. From normal science the rules are agreed upon or disagreed upon in debates that cannot be concluded, science is puzzle solving, but some contradictions in theory cannot be resolved. To revolutionary science important rules are called into question, contradictions may be resolved, paradigms shift. To new normal science new rules are accepted, science returns to puzzle solving under new rules, an illustration of the theory in practice is the Copernican revolution, where Copernicus' idea of a sun-centered solar system was largely ignored not in the rules when first introduced, then Galileo was deemed a heretic for supporting the idea rules called into question, and finally, after a revolution in cosmology, the solar system became an obvious and foundational part of scientific knowledge new rules. Another example is the question of whether light is a particle or a wave. For a long time there was debate on this point. Advocates on both sides had many valid arguments based on scientific evidence but were lacking a theory that would resolve the conflict. After a revolution in thinking, it was realized that both perspectives could be true. Physicist and policy advisor James J. K. described post-normal science as a process that recognizes the potential for gaps in knowledge and understanding that cannot be resolved in ways other than revolutionary science. He argued that between revolutions one should not necessarily attempt to resolve or dismiss contradictory perspectives of the world, whether they are based on science or not, but instead incorporate multiple viewpoints into the same problem-solving process. From the ecological perspective post-normal science can be situated in the context of crisis disciplines a term coined by the conservation biologist Michael E. Soule to indicate approaches addressing fears, emerging in the 70s, that the world was on the verge of ecological collapse. In this respect Michael Egan defines PNS as a survival science. Moving from PNS Ziauddin Sardar developed the concept of post-normal times PNT. Sardar was the editor of Futures when it published the article Science for the Post-Normal Age presently the most cited paper of the journal. A recent review of academic literature conducted on the web of science and encompassing the topics of futures studies, foresight, forecasting and anticipation practice identifies the same paper as the all-time publication that received the highest number of citations. Content At birth post-normal science was conceived as an inclusive set of robust insights more than as an exclusive fully structured theory or field of practice." Some of the ideas underpinning PNS can already be found in a work published in 1983 and entitled, Three Types of Risk Assessment, a Methodological Analysis." This and subsequent works show that PNS concentrates on few aspects of the complex relation between science and policy, the communication of uncertainty, the assessment of quality, and the justification and practice of the extended peer communities. The horizontal axis represents systems uncertainties and the vertical one decision stakes. The three quadrants identify applied science, professional consultancy, and post-normal science. Different standards of quality and styles of analysis are appropriate to different regions in the diagram, i.e. Post-normal science does not claim relevance and cogency on all of science's application but only on those defined by the PNS's mantram with a fourfold challenge, facts uncertain, values in dispute, stakes high and decisions urgent. 
for applied research science's own peer quality control system will suffice or so was assumed at the moment PNS was formulated in the early 90s, while professional consultancy was considered appropriate for these settings which cannot be peer-reviewed, and where the skills and the tacit knowledge of a practitioner are needed at the forefront, e.g. in a surgery room, or in a house on fire. Here a surgeon or a fireman takes a difficult technical decision based on her or his training and appreciation of the situation the Greek concept of Métis mythology. Complexity There are important linkages between PNS and complexity science, e.g. system ecology and hierarchy theory in PNS, complexity is respected through its recognition of a multiplicity of legitimate perspectives on any issue, and reflexivity is realized through the extension of accepted facts beyond the supposedly objective productions of traditional research. Also, the new participants in the process are not treated as passive learners at the feet of the experts, being coercively convinced through scientific demonstration. Rather, they will form an extended peer community, sharing the work of quality assurance of the scientific inputs to the process, and arriving at a resolution of issues through debate and dialogue. <laughs> <laughs> extended peer community PNS concept of extended peer community moves from and transcends the familiar concept of scientific peer community relative to a well-defined field of scientific research. The peer community is extended in two respects. First, more than one discipline is assumed to have a potential bearing on the issue being debated, thereby providing different lenses to consider the problem. Second, the community is extended to lay actors, taken to be all those with stakes, or an interest, in the given issue. Perhaps the best justification of the concept is offered by Paul Feyerabend in Against Method. For Feyerabend the participation of experts together with non-experts would allow the citizens to mature, inter alia by realizing that the experts are themselves lay people outside their restricted field of competence. For John Domenico Magione. In any area of public policy the choice of instruments, far from being a technical exercise that can be safely delegated to the experts, reflects as in a microcosm all the political, moral, and cultural dimensions of policy making." The same author notes Dialectical confrontation between generalists and experts often succeeds in bringing out unstated assumptions, conflicting interpretations of the facts, and the risks posed by the projects. These considerations justifies the need for an extended peer community, as the arena where the policy instruments and options can be discussed with, but without deference to, the experts and the authorities. The lay members of the community thus constituted may also take upon themselves active research tasks, this has happened e.g. in the so-called popular epidemiology, when the official authorities have shown reticence to perform investigations deemed necessary by the communities affected, for example, by a case of air or water pollution, and more recently, citizen science. The extended community can usefully investigate the quality of the scientific assessments provided by the experts, the definition of the problem, as well as research priorities and research questions. Thus, the extension of the peer community is not only ethically fair or politically correct, but also enhances the quality of the relevant science. An example is provided by Brian Wynne, who discusses the Cumbrian sheep farmer's interaction with scientists and authorities in the relation to the Chernobyl radioactive fallout. Topic. Applications Beside its dominating influence in the literature on futures, PNS is considered to have influenced the ecological conservation versus preservation debate, especially via its reading by American pragmatist Brian G. Norton. According to Joseph Kulertz the PNS concept of extended peer community influenced how Norton's developed his convergence hypothesis. The hypothesis posits that ecologists of different orientation will converge once they start thinking as a mountain, or as a planet. For Norton this will be achieved via deliberative democracy, which will pragmatically overcome the black and white divide between conservationists and preservationists. Other authors attribute to PNS the role of having stimulated the take-up of transdisciplinary methodological frameworks, reliant on the social constructivist perspective embedded in PNS. 
Today post-normal science is intended as applicable to most instances where the use of evidence is contested due to different norms and values. As summarized in a recent work, the ideas and concepts of post-normal science bring about the emergence of new problem-solving strategies in which the role of science is appreciated in its full context of the complexity and the uncertainty of natural systems and the relevance of human commitments and values. For Peter Gluckman, 2014, Chief Science Advisor to the Prime Minister of New Zealand, post-normal science approaches are today appropriate for a host of problems, including Eradication of exogenous pests, offshore oil prospecting, legalization of recreational psychotropic drugs, water quality, family violence, obesity, teenage morbidity and suicide, the aging population, the prioritization of early childhood education, reduction of agricultural greenhouse gases, and balancing economic growth and environmental sustainability. For Carosa PNS can be framed in terms of a call for the democratization of expertise and as a reaction against long-term trends of scientization of politics the tendency towards assigning to experts a critical role in policymaking while marginalizing laypeople for mike holm 2007 writing on the guardian climate change seems falls into the category of issues which are best dealt with in the context of pns and notes that Disputes in post-normal science focus as often on the process of science, who gets funded, who evaluates quality, who has the ear of policy, as on the facts of science. Recent reviews of the history and evolution of PNS, its definitions, conceptualizations, and uses can be found in Turn Penny et al., 2010, and in the Routledge Handbook of Ecological Economics, Nature and Society. There has been recently an increased reference to post-normal science, e.g. in Nature Journal. Criticism A criticism of post-normal science is offered by Weingart for whom post-normal science does not introduce a new epistemology but retraces earlier debates linked to the so-called finalization thesis. Topic special issues The journal Futures devoted several specials issues to PNS. The first was in 1999 and included as editorial two pieces, from Jerome Ravitz and Silvio Fundovich, Post-Normal Science, An Insight Now Maturing, and from Jerome Ravitz, What is Post-Normal Science? The second special issue, edited by Merrill Wynne Davies, was entitled Post-Normal Times in 2011. This was a selection of papers from the symposium Post-Normal Science, Perspectives and Perspectives 26-27 th June 2009, Oxford. A summary of the abstracts can be found on the NUSAP net. The third special issue on PNS was in 2017. This special issue contains a selection of papers discussed at the University of Bergen's Center for the Study of the Sciences and the Humanities between 2014 and 2016. The issue includes also two extended commentaries on the present crisis in science and the post-fact, post-truth discourse, one from Europe Saltelli and, Fundovich, and one from Japan Sukihara. All articles in this special issue are in open access. Another special issue on post-normal science was published on the journal Science, Technology and Human Values in May 2011. More titles and links relative to PNS special issues are available at the NUSAP net. Topic. Recent production A group of scholars of PNS orientation has published in 2016 a volume on the quality control crisis of science. The volume discusses inter alia what this community perceive as the root causes of the present crisis. Topic. Quantitative approaches Among the quantitative styles of analysis which make reference to post-normal science one can mention NUSAP for numerical information, sensitivity auditing for indicators and mathematical modeling and MUSIASEM in the field of social metabolism. Mathematical modeling 
In relation to mathematical modeling PNS suggests a participatory approach, whereby models to predict and control the future are replaced by models to map our ignorance about the future, in the process exploring and revealing the metaphors embedded in the model. PNS is also known for the its definition of GIGO. In modeling GIGO occurs when the uncertainties in the inputs must be suppressed, lest the outputs become completely indeterminate. PNS events Science for Policy, Post-Normal Science in Practice, December 10-11-2014 Bergen no. New Currents in Science, The Challenges of Quality, March 3-4-2016 ISPRA Post-Truth and a Crisis of Trust Perspectives from Post-Normal Science and Extended Citizen Participation, Tübingen, 25–26 September 2017. Coming Event Science as a Movement, Between Informed Critical Resistance, Reform and the Making of Futures, 4th International Symposium on Post-Normal Science, Barcelona, 15–17 November 2018.